Good morning. Welcome to St. Petrie Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Tim Malik. Uh, delighted to have you all here. This is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. And for some people, it's a long uh, Fourth of July weekend. The fourth isn't until Tuesday, uh, but we're delighted uh, that you're here. I'm sure celebrating multiple things this day. Let's begin service with our confession and forgiveness. If it's comfortable for you to stand, please do so. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. We sing our gathering hymn, Gather Us In. The words will be on the screen, or it's hymn number 532 in our hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to the word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your mind forever, and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. For you are the glory of their strength. And by your favor, our might is exalted. A reading from Romans. <clears throat> Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one Whom you obey, either sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. And that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is the eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. It's time for the children's sermon. Do we have any children? No? 
Are you going to come up, girls? I don't bite, honest. <laughs> oh, Joel's coming too. Good morning. And as they're all coming up, I just want to point out if people haven't met Joel, he is our youth worker that we share with Bergen Lutheran and Grace Methodist Church. And uh, we get him a couple, once or twice a month, and we're happy to have him here. Uh, he's busy working at Riverside Bible Camp this summer, so most of uh, our youth activities he's involved in are during the school year. But I wanted him up front so everyone could see him again, and maybe the kids could get to know him a little better. Today we're going to talk about the word, what does that say? It says, welcome. Jesus wants us to welcome all people. We are going to look at the word welcome and talk about each letter. In other words, we're doing, going to do the ABCs of welcome. I remember doing the ABCs of Easter. I will use some verses from Psalm 100 to help us with our letters. Psalm 100, I learned in Sunday school at St. Petrie, and I think it was Helen Manson that taught us to it if anybody remembers her. Okay, now we're going to look at this. We have welcome. You know what, could you hold this for me? Thank you. Oh, I gotta have my. W is just for the word welcome. And we see welcome maybe in a store window or on a Maybe on a mat in front, front of somebody's door to welcome them to your house. Okay, where am I? I got it written down. E is for ears. What do we do with our ears? We listen. <laughs> we listen. <laughs> See, I, if he's going to be up here, he's going to have to help. <laughs> we use our ears to listen to what Jesus has taught us through his teachings in the Bible. L is for lambs. And here's where verse Psalm 100 comes in. Come before, no, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all he lands. And all he lands is everybody. Oh, dear, I got a C. C is for come. Come before his presence with singing, which we have already done this morning several times. O is for open our hearts to reach God's love and to share with others. M is for matters. Now, that's kind of a different word to use. What matters is that we share God's love with each other. And E is for sheep. Look at that. A e. Sheep begins with S H. You're right. Well, there's two E's in the middle of sheep. That's why I use the letter sheep. We are the sheep of his pastures. Jesus is our shepherd and has taken care of us like shepherds take care of sheep. Now, to end. I am going to share Psalm 100 with all of you. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all he lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Should we close with a prayer? Dear Jesus, thank you for giving us your word that we may read it, and then others read that we can listen. Help us to be welcoming to all people. In your name, amen. Thank you for coming up. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Sharon and Joel. And uh, 
everyone else. I invite you to stand now for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives, even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of our Lord. You You may be seated. Make sure my mic's on. There it is. Um, I don't know how many of you watch stuff on the internet or on your TV that's from like YouTube, Facebook. I'm just curious, did any of you watch videos from that kind of stuff? Okay, not all of us, some of us. One of the things I enjoy watching, which is kind of silly stuff, but um, sometimes there are people that'll film like what I would call a Rube Goldberg machine. Now the ones of you that are old enough that you don't really Pay attention to the internet. Do you know what I mean by Rube Goldberg? It used to be a one-panel comic strip in the newspaper, but it were these crazy machines, like you'd have somebody that would, you know, turn a switch and it would open a door to a mouse cage and the mouse would run down a tunnel and grab a piece of cheese, which would pull a string, which would tip a candle over, which would burn a rope, which would drop an end. You know, you get the idea. It was all these different... Uh, chain reactions that would then result in like their toast being made. If, you, if, if you've ever seen uh, Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure, that starts with his kind of Rube Goldberg machine that made him breakfast and poured his dog a bowl of food. Um, there is a pop band. The name of this band is called OK Go. I think I have that name right. I'm looking at Joel. I don't know. Maybe... <laughs> Not in his wheelhouse. Okay, go. I think that's the name of the group. They're famous for their music. Does anyone else nod your head loudly? or Have you ever heard of them? Oh, wow. Well, with adult supervision, you can do a Google search for okay, go. And some of their videos, their first one that I remember was famous is the whole band is dancing as they're singing. And they're using a whole bunch of um, treadmills. So it looks like they're sliding when they're walking and dancing because the treadmills are moving them, but they're doing it just an amazing amount of choreography. But they've got one or two songs that are, the music is set in time to these really elaborate Rube Goldberg chain reaction machines that all kinds of amazing things happen. Um, I just think they're kind of fun that way. Or maybe you have seen a video where someone has set up thousands upon thousands of dominoes and then pushes the first one, and they all fall over, and they make elaborate designs. I kind of think, in a lot of ways, God's grace is a type of chain reaction. The way that we exhibit or live out God's grace can have an amazing chain reaction. Now, the one difference is is that if the mouse doesn't want the cheese, or the anvil misses the lever, Um, or the dominoes aren't lined up perfectly straight, it can stop. I don't think God's grace can be stopped. So I I might think of other things. You know, I've seen chain reactions where somebody makes a a statue or piece of art out of matchstick heads. And the idea is that when flame hits it, it all goes up pretty quick. That seems like you can't stop that chain reaction. Or I understand if you start a nuclear reaction in an atomic bomb, you can't stop it, you know. I I don't want to compare destruction to God's grace, but I think God's grace can be an unstoppable reaction. And remember in this chapter that we're in in Matthew, the 10th chapter, we've had it now for a few weeks, 
Jesus is giving instruction to the 12. It all started when he saw the crowds and they were oppressed and he had pity on them. He had uh, sympathy for them. And he said they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he said the, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So he said, pray that the Lord might send more laborers into the field. And then as an answer to their own prayer, Jesus then gives authority to the 12 disciples and sends them out as apostles and tells them what to do. Tell people that the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cast out demons, cure their illnesses. And he gives them a whole bunch of other instruction. Don't take extra baggage. Don't take extra clothes. Don't take money. You're going to rely on the, the kindness of strangers. And he warns them that they're going to meet opposition at times, and that there might even be division within families. But he also tells them that there'll be great rewards. And then this little section we have today, even a cup of cold water is going to be enough to make a difference in people's lives. Even. Now that's that use of the word even is meant to intensify or to bring attention to what Jesus is talking about. It's kind of like the word just. Even. Even a cup of cold water. Now, what Jesus is talking about is those that are going to receive the disciples. If they welcome those disciples, it's as if they're welcoming Jesus. And if they welcome Jesus, it's as if they're welcoming God the Creator, God the Father. So I don't know if chain reaction quite follows with that, but it, it's a given that if somebody welcomes the disciple, they welcome Jesus, they welcome the fullness of God. And Jesus says, even a cup of cool water is a way of showing that they're welcome. So this is partially about how you're going to be welcomed in the world. You might meet resistance at times. There might be division, maybe with, even within your family. But the word of God cannot be stopped. The grace of God cannot be stopped. And part of that grace, part of the presence of God in our lives, I believe is hospitality. Now, to be clear, Jesus is talking about how people are going to receive the disciples. But I think for us that are here in the established church and are the body of Christ, we need to think about how we exhibit hospitality as well as how we receive it. Now, think about all the different ways that you receive hospitality. Some of it's very much welcomed, I would think. I, uh, I can remember when... Um, once driving to Florida, and we entered the state of Georgia. And I'm one of those tourists that will often stop by at the first rest area that's got the, you know, tourist information. And in Georgia, when we entered Georgia, they were giving out free Coca-Cola products, a little paper cup of Coke or Diet Coke or something. As you may know, Coca-Cola is based in Atlanta. Well, at the time, I didn't drink coffee, so I thought, wow, this is the greatest thing to get a little spot of di cold Diet Coke on my way down the interstate. Um, and then when we hit Florida at the tourist place, maybe some of you have experienced this, you got a little free orange juice. Um, I thought, what would we give in Iowa? Some corn syrup or no? I, I don't, I mean, that's important stuff, but we probably don't give that out. And anyway, um, and, you know, we've all, maybe some of you have been to Wall Drug in South Dakota where they're famous for giving away ice water, which is nice. Um, sometimes, you know, all the difference in the world, our first impression when we go into a motel for the first time is how they exhibit hospitality, whether it's in the lobby when you check in or when you get into your room and you see something there that makes you feel welcome. That's all important, but I think there's something more that, that can be offered, and that's the human connection. First of all, I want to say that I think you guys do a good job of that here at St. Petri. Uh, but I've thought that of most churches that I've served, 
In fact, uh, when I served Zion in Iowa City, um, and I, I did the new member process in that congregation, and we would ask the people who were joining, you know, what attracted you to this church? Why do you join? They all said, oh, it's such a friendly place. Well, we once hired a group, the Kairos group, to come in and help us with a strategic plan, and part of what they did was an audit, both an internal and an external audit. So they talked to our members, they talked to the newest members, they talked to the longtime members, and talking to those people, yes, Zion was a friendly place. But they did something interesting. They also went to some of the neighboring churches and found the people who had visited Zion but decided to join either at Gloria Day or Christ the King or one of the other churches in town. And they asked them, why didn't you join Zion? Or what, what's your impression of Zion? One woman who was a single woman who didn't have kids, because kids often attract attention of others, said, I stood right by the coffee pot in their fellowship uh, uh, hall with my coffee cup in hand for a month of Sundays, and nobody talked to me. Now, Zion is a friendly place, and I'm using their name because they took this information to heart when they got it, and they really wanted to work on being a friendly place to everybody, not just the people with kids or the couples or, or the ones that are already extroverted and reach out to people. Hospitality, I think it can be a way of life that exhibits or exemplifies, maybe is a better word, the sense of grace and gratitude that we have because of what God is doing in our lives. Another example of this, I got to travel to Tanzania as part of a companion trip. Our church, again, Zion and Iowa City, had a relationship with the Lombo Lutheran Parish in the Pari Mountains of Northeast Tanzania. And learning some of the culture there, when you approach somebody's home, you call out, Hodi, Hodi. These were some Swahili words. And it meant, hello there, here we come, hello, Hodi. And as soon as they heard you, even before they saw you, you'd hear from inside the dwelling, Karibu, Karibu, which means welcome, come on ahead, please, Karibu. And such hospitality, it was normal. If we were on our way, we had a place to visit, and it was going to be about a 45-minute walk to get there. It would almost always take us two or three hours to get there. And the reason is, is that people would be come down the path from their home to the main path that we were on and grab us and, and insist that we come to their house for tea. Now, there was never, um, rarely was there tea served at these. There would be like some fried plantains or some beans or a little bit of bread, something to drink, coffee, pop, usually just in bottles, no ice or anything. Um, but they insisted on hospitality. They wanted us to come to their place. And, uh, and this was just the norm of life around there. You, you never, you know, you could wear a wristwatch, but it did you no good. You know, there, the sun came up about 8 in the morning and it went down about 8 at night, every night, because we were near the equator. And that was your day, and you just had certain things that you tried to do and get there, and it would always take longer than you thought to get there. Um, and if you didn't look at your watch, you were perfectly happy. <laughs> but it was all about hospitality. The people there would share whatever they had, and they often didn't have enough food for the next day, but they'd share what they had. One place that we were visiting, this woman insisted that we come and visit, and she had, I think, just drinks for us that day. And then we're hearing this through a translator, and she didn't even speak Swahili. She spoke Pare, which is an even local, more local dialect uh, language there. She wanted to show us uh, the most valuable thing that she owned. She lived in a, you know, they all had a separate little building for their cook fire, their kitchen, and then the dwelling that she lived in had two rooms. And in the back room, there was a cupboard about this big. And she went back and opened it, and it only had one thing in it. It was a small jar, you know, maybe that big. And in the bottom of it was the thing that she held as the most precious possession that she had. And it was a little bit of wild honey. And she wanted to share some with us. Out of this bare cupboard, her most precious thing, she wanted to... Sh now, I, I like honey, and I took beekeeping at Iowa State a long time ago. And I know I've got some uh, 
People that have their own apiary here that raise honey grow, have bees. Wild honey that she had had been scraped out of a tree somewhere. So it was very dark, had lots of little bits of twigs and wood and bugs in it. And my two companions from the US were kind of a little reluctant, but I was very eager. And we got just a little bit on the end of a, like almost a chopstick. And it was delightful. And she was so overjoyed, she was almost in tears to be able to share it with us. This thing that she prized so much. So I was touched by hospitality. One more story about hospitality. I'm, I'm getting closer to what I think the church is called to do. I was on the internship committee as a layperson for our church in Texas at Calvary Lutheran. And our intern, Phil Heinz, who still serves that church as a pastor now, told this story. It was his experience. When he was studying at Trinity Seminary in Columbus, Ohio, he had a work-study job where he worked basically in something that was referred to as a drunk tank. It was a homeless shelter for men who the police brought in when they were inebriated and had no place to go. So it was a little rougher, you might say, than a regular homeless shelter, but it was not incarceration. But most of the guys got there in a squad car. And Phil worked there at nights, like the overnight shift and on weekends, caring for these guys, offering to give them pastoral counseling if they wanted any, but basically cleaning up after them. And he talked about that on Sundays, some area churches took turns conducting a little worship service and feeding these men. And one church, I'm not going to name the denomination, I'll just say that it was a conservative Christian group. One person would show up, the preacher, he'd be dressed in a suit and a tie, and he would insist that if they wanted lunch, they had to sit in his worship service. And for an hour and a half, he told them all that they were going to hell that they had to straighten up their life, they had to get off alcohol and follow Jesus or they were all going to hell. And then their lunch consisted of one cheese sandwich. Phil said that his favorite group was a group of Mennonites. And they'd show up three or four hours before lunch. Families, men and women, children. They'd start chopping vegetables. They'd start making bread. Somebody would pull out a guitar, start playing some songs, a couple hours before lunchtime. Pretty soon, the smell of fresh baked bread and a good stew was permeating the whole building. And there was song and laughter going on. They sat down all together to have a great feast. And in the midst of that, they'd have worship. They'd share some scripture. They'd hear some testimony. And again, lots of song and laughter and even some tears. Now I ask you, I already know the answer you're going to say, which more exhibited the grace of God? Which more exhibited the hospitality? Which more exhibited the ministry of Jesus Christ? Who ate, who got in trouble, by the way, for eating with tax collectors and sinners. Now, I'm preaching to the choir, quite literally. We don't have a choir sitting over here. You guys are good at this. As I look out among all of you here, I think every one of you has volunteered in some way to further the ministry of this congregation. I should say the ministry of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of heaven that happens under the banner of St. Petrie Lutheran. Whether it's quilting or loaves and fishes, um, helping with Sunday school, there's just so many things that you have done. I want to thank you. You've been a part of this body of Christ that makes a difference in the world. Even something little, like putting your offering in the offering plate, has cosmic and eternal significance. Let me say that again. Even something as minor as putting a, a small amount of money in the offering plate, or bringing in some towels and soap for welcoming a refugee family, Something that seems insignificant like that has cosmic, meaning universal, everywhere, and eternal significance. Because it makes an impact. It'll touch, it causes ripples to go out into this world that show God's love and care for all people. 
Now, there are some opportunities in front of us right now. Betty is kind of helping coordinate this. Betty Grundy, I'm looking at her not to put her on the spot. But in the newsletter and on the table out here by the office is a list of ways that we can help welcome some refugee families to Iowa. Some of it's material things. I think there's some information about advocacy and other ways that we can help. Take a look at that. There's also a display downstairs and a place to bring your donated items. There's going to be a back to school, I think they call it blast, that's coming up where we can get school supplies to fill backpacks to give to the kids, some of which have, don't have the means to get the minimum required supplies for school. We can help with that. We've got an opportunity coming up with loaves and fishes once again. We've got our own vacation Bible school day camp coming up here. And we can use lots of volunteers and helpers with that. There's lots of information in the bulletin as well as the newsletter, which you should have received online just recently. We're always looking for more people to help out with some projects around the church, but all of these, even maintaining the building and grounds is a part of the ministry of hospitality, making sure that everyone feels welcomed among the body of Christ. And what I'm proud of, of St. Petrie, is that we're also an inside-out church, right? As, an, as nice as all this is, we're about the work that it makes an impact out there, part of the chain reaction of God's grace, God's love for this whole world. Let's uh, sing our hymn of the day, which is All Are Welcome, hymn number 641. The words will be on the screen. Please stand if it's comfortable. and children tell our hearts learn to forgive hopes and dreams and visions are strong and true, where all God's children dare to seek, dream God's reign anew. And the cross shall stand as witness, and the symbol of God's grace. Here is one we claim the faith of Jesus, all are welcome, all are welcome. Let's build a house where love is found. And we fall on holy ground. Peace and justice be. As we share in Christ the peace that frees us. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where hands will reach on the wood and stone to heal and strengthen, serve and teach, live the word there you know. Bear the outcast in the stranger, bear the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to and danger. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where all Treasure taught and 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creature of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share the peace with one another. Our ushers will continue with the offering as you are seated. Just another opportunity to say thank you for your generous support of the Missions of Christ through St. Petri Lutheran Church. It's part of our ritual here that we pass the plates down every pew, knowing that people give it various frequencies, but it's a part of the ingathering of God's gifts for all people. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. We pray for the church, for wisdom to heed the voices of prophets in our midst who cast a vision of God's promised future, for courage to welcome people from whom society rejects, for resolve to serve all in need. God, in your mercy. We pray for creation, for the skunk, Des Moines, raccoon, Cedar, Iowa rivers, for lakes, oceans, and streams, 
for lands experiencing scorching heat, drought, or wildfires, for conservation organizations and environmental activists, for scientists working on clean energy solutions. God, in your mercy. We pray for the United States of America and all nations, for presidents, governors, and legislatures, for judges, juries, district attorneys, and public defenders. We pray for military personnel. We pray for those who are incarcerated. Guide us in ways of freedom that promote the common good. God, in your mercy, we pray for those in need, for exiles, immigrants, refugees, and those seeking asylum. For victims of harassment, torture, or abuse. And we pray for those who are ill, especially Ordine, Bev, Mark, Marilyn, Pat, Jay, Mardell, Carl, Kim, Duane, Paul, Grant, Linda, Tom, Marilyn, Howard, Kay, Alice, Darlene, Barb, and all those that we name in the silence of our hearts. Grant them your healing. We pray for any near death and for all who grieve. God, in your mercy, we pray for children, for their safety at home and in child care settings, for their flourishing at summer programs and camps, for the many people who care for them, including parents and grandparents, child care workers and teachers, coaches, counselors and mentors, pediatricians and psychologists. God, in your mercy, we give thanks for all the saints and prophets who have received the free gift of God, which is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. May their lives of humble service inspire us in faith. Lord, and we pray that you pour out your spirit of celebration and blessing on those celebrating an anniversary of their baptism, including Jacob, Spencer, Roxanne, Lynn, and Sarah. God, in your mercy, receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. Happy 4th of July. Men's Bible study is three, uh, 8 o'clock on Thursdays in the chapel. Loaves and fishes will be staffing the pantry on July 15th. So please call Larry or John if you're able to help with that. Day camp's coming up the 31st that week. Lots of ways uh, to help out with that. Loaves and fishes, uh, we already talked about the volunteers. There's a uh, information about items that they could use. There's a fish and chicken dinner next Sunday. It's in the bulletin. We have a YouTube channel. Does anyone else have an announcement they want to make? Betty, do you want to say any more about the uh, refugee drive? Yeah, and again, up here by the office, there's a checklist, too, of stuff that you can, that's a reprint from our newsletter if, you're, if you want more information, too. It's probably the same that's downstairs. Yeah, Joel. Uh, Riverside's looking for volunteers to do various things. Um, like I know for, week, for the last week of the summer, they're looking for a medical volunteer. So if you have that kind of experience. Um, other than that. A medical volunteer. 
So they have to have any credentials like a RN or anything or? Um, I mean, it could be as, as small as like just like an EMT. An EMT? Uh, or like wilderness first aid maybe or? Yeah. Okay. Camp, camp medical person. And I know that involves a lot of handing out of medication. So somebody that can keep track of all that probably. Great. Any other announcements? All right, let's stand for the blessing and the sending him. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. To celebrate this weekend, we are uh, uh, singing O Beautiful for Spacious Skies, hymn number 888, or the words will be on the screen. We are disciples of Christ, called to grow in Christ, and to Go in peace, share the harvest. Thanks be to God.